My name is Hartmut Althoff. I'm the manager of the RS Co company from Germany. And uh, I'd like to give you some outlook uh, what is already possible, let's say, with semi-automatic instruments. Uh, we focus mainly on the microscope spectroscopy, but of course it's a subject for us to uh, discuss uh, also the microscope types and the type of process automatization. <clears throat> I don't want to go to details how the measurement principle is, so I would like to start directly with the situation which we have at the moment. So, as a current status for the moment is, we have manual microscopes and of course we have motorized microscopes. And everyone knows that motorized microscopes have millions of options and uh, we need some of them which make our life also easier. That is motorized field stops to focus, to make stray light reduction and all these things. And of course we use this in a standard microscope and we modify these microscopes to deep UV as well as to infrared. So the microscopes which we design for the forensic group are able to measure 200 to 2000 on request and they are scaled to different um, applications. So the question is, can we use this microscope for the automatic process which is uh, desired here or do we make, have to make some modifications? And the answer is, uh, I think we need a different type of microscope to solve your subject because this one which you see is a bit too expensive, but uh, we have this one ready to use. So at the moment we will start what is possible to run this microscope. We have scanning stages also from stock and the best scanning stages which have a good reliability is uh, this one which is 130 by 85. This is a standard stage which you can buy from a German manufacturer and the interesting thing of this stage is that he has a so-called closed loop facility. That means normally a cheap scanning stage is advised to go to position and you never get an answer if he has arrived. And um, this scanning stage gives you an information that he arrived at this position. And this, of course, is very important for us because our idea is to make coordinations, uh, to fix coordinates for an additional uh, measurement of spectroscopy or Raman or whatever you want to do in a second step. So this is very important. And of course, the size, this 130.85, is a reasonable quality which can be used that also on the random areas we have two microns uh, resolution as well as in the center. If you make comparison between different scanning stages you will find out that the company's um, offer of the resolution is achieved in some cases but not always over the complete range. So if you want to measure particles which or areas which have large diameter, it has to be ensured that also at the random parts, the quality of a stage must be there. And uh, this is one of the stages which uh, does it, let's say, reasonable. There's another one which we have uh, in combination with a cooperation partner, which will be able to make A6, that means 180, 180 by 120, with a resolution of half a micron. And uh, this is a special one, which we have in the testing period at the moment, which may be a subject for your things, but also this one is not A4, it's only a quarter of it, but the quarter already has a good uh, chance to succeed. The third thing is, of course, the camera. We do not take a high-quality camera in terms of um, the resolution. We take a medium-quality camera because this matches to the needs we need. As we heard from Michael Doppler, that uh, the amount of data should not be too much. And, of course, we need a camera which has large pixel size that we are able to measure weak signals with reasonable time slots. That means uh, we cannot, if we want to make stitching, we cannot use cameras which need several 
several seconds to make an image. So we need a camera with a high sensitivity, but we need a standard camera to have high frame rates. And this camera, for example, offers us a stitching frequency of 80 frames per second. So if we want to measure large areas and we make a synchronization, we have, let's say, a reasonable speed in succeeding to get our football field, which is of interest. So these are the things which we can buy from stock. And of course, um, we need some coordination. And this is our job in this business. Uh, we made some software and hardware modifications that the microscope, for example, is also equipped now with a closed loop. That means we can advise the microscope to select a position with a, quanti uh, with a uh, precision of 10 nanos. And we have a scanning stage with a precision of, let's say, two microns. And this enables us to measure in three dimensions. That means we have the football field horizontal, and we can select an area where we can focus in, and we have autofocus on this place. And we sold already these instruments. Uh, in the cosmetic industry. In the cosmetic industry, people have this kind of micropigments, which have, for example, 10 microns, different colors. And the job is to get more information about the distribution of these pigments, which you see there. And um, of course, the principle is what we have to do also in your case. We make a lot of stitching, automated, of course. We make some autofocus checks to find the right level. And we need some uh, more, usually 100, 150 images to collect the football field. And then, as a consequence, we get this overview here, which shows you a complete area of detection. And um, we can, of course, uh, compare to your tapes. This is a very nice sample because you have black and colored particles. So you can easily ask an automatic imaging system to find the positions and to store them in X, Y, and Z. And if the particles are in the third dimension, you make a small autofocus and you have the, the lower level of such a particle ready to use. And of course, these data are stored and you can use them for the spectroscopic analysis. And um, what we can do at the moment, or what we do at the moment is, we have the complete area, and then we look for areas of interest, particle of interest, focus them, and then we can zoom them out, and we can make an individual estimation if they are useful or not. And this is the state of the art which we have at the moment. If we think of the discussions yesterday and the amount of particles and the fact that we have fibers which are crossed and all these problems which we will have in your samples, I think this is very easy, but um, I see a lot of problems to find an image analysis system which will be able to make an automatic image analysis of such a football field. And the question will be, how precise we are able to manage such a question. And um, as I mentioned, at the moment it is done individually. That means this method is faster than going uh, step by step manually via stereo microscope. And you have stored everything because this complete stack of data is stored. And of course the coordinates are stored. You can transfer them to a second instrument for other applications. Um, like chemistry analysis or whatever. But uh, coming back to the imaging, I think we will have to solve this problem, how we find uh, the right amount of data, because I would expect maximum 5% of the particles are interest for you in a second, um, in a second observation. And the question is, how we are able to separate the rubbish of 95% from this interesting five that we can store this. And this is a thing which will be one of the subjects for the next future which we have to discuss. So if we look to the future, how can we create such a concept? And we talked about the resolution on possible uh, questions. I think Cornelia did the right um, comment to this. Uh, 
we have, I think we have to go in two steps. We have to find a solution which gives us a macroscopic overview that we get the large area with less resolution and then we can look to this um, and try to find out by image analysis or in the worst case by manual, uh, uh, by hand, where are the areas of interest which can be used for a second um, detection. And then of course, uh, I'm not a friend of correlative microscopy, that means if we have um, the tapes which are not clear and defined plates or something. We have uh, flexible systems and if we put them from one microscope to another setting, I think we never find the position which we created with one micron precision. As, so I, I have my doubts when I look to other applications in this field. So I would prefer an instrument where you have two detection um, systems, one, let's say, macroscopic way and one microscopic configuration. But I would keep the sample on the same stage because otherwise the quality of my coordinates are not uh, serious enough from my point of view from the moment, let's say. Of course, um, if it becomes better, uh, we can implement the new ideas, but at the moment, according to our experience, I would say um, that would be not a good idea to change in this intermediate process. Um, now, one other thing which was discussed was the classification. And the classification, we can get, uh, we can rely on some uh, results which have been in the clean, uh, which have been mean, um, measured in the particle analysis of clean room uh, observation. They look for dust for many years now, and they have very nice results using spectrometers. Uh, we had a cooperation with Fraunhofer, which is a German scientific research institute. Uh, this is already 10 years old. And in this situation, we made a common project. We took a normal microscope and we took a camera to this microscope and made very simple bright field illumination, dark field illumination, and glancing that meets tray light illumination. And we make a football field, as usual, to get the large area. And then we make a classical particle analysis with an existing standard uh, of um, an image analysis company, of a microscope image analysis program. And uh, then, of course, we get the coordinates, which, are, which show us the particles of interest. And we put these coordinates, of course, they were made by a scanning stage to find them again. And uh, then we make a second measurement. The first was with bright field to get the particles. The second one was with UV light, normal UV light, that means 350. And uh, with normal UV light, you get in most of the cases a separation between biotic materials, so living materials, and anorganic materials. So this is the first step to separate, um, let's say, anorganic material from, a, uh, from biological material. And you have the chance to find the glass, to find the dust, and to separate it if you are interested in the biological parts. In the biological parts, we have help by the spectrometer because some biological substances give clearly defined spectra. For example, in this case, we measure NADH. This is uh, prominent at 320 and um, 270, which is no problem with a UV microscope. And by checking these peaks, you find out that the, uh, that the uh, particle has some kind of biological activity because NADJ, NADH is a characterism for living cells. And you can check the quality of living cells um, by the peak size, very simple. There are some other uh, particles which you see. You have amino acids which are characteristics for proteins, and of course, which was not part of this project, but a uh, project which we have running at the moment is uh, separation of DNA and RNA and uh, proteins in the UV range at 260, 280, and 230. 
So these are measurements which uh, we are doing at the moment with some forensic chemistry guys. And I hope that we get uh, some significant information how to find these um, molecules without using any stain. That's a, because that's the most important thing. Uh, it is one aspect to find out uh, um, where the particles are. And then, of course, the second thing must be for classification. What is there on this position? And as long as we do not have to use stains, we are on the safe side because we do not influence the samples. Now we come to the most critical point. It's a tape. And um, the question is, how does a tape influence the system? First of all, I'd like to say, we put in our instrument a slider, uh, which offers us to put a, a tape with a size of 20 by 60 directly to the microscope. And then, of course, we measured the difference between a classical glass, quartz glass preparation, and the preparation through a tape. And, um, we recognize that almost 90% of all tapes block here at 300, so there's no chance to get one of the most important informations of uh, fibers, uh, if it's a natural or um, um, synthetic. This is of course done with one view in the UV range. And if you um, cannot see the UV range because the tape is not transmitting UV, you will have a problem in the preparation in principle. The question is, are there tapes on the market which avoid this problem? And we found one solution in Switzerland which gives us here the UV transmission. And we uh, made these measurements uh, in a comparison um, you see a red fiber, a group of red fibers, and you see in the visible range, you have here a slightly difference, okay, but uh, more or less the result is similar and comparable. And in the UV, you see here the influence of the tape, that means we have, of course, an absorption of the plastic. This was expected, but uh, it is not so strong that we do not have any information. You see, we have 25% um, transmission there, and I would say as long as we have a quality of 5% and better, the um, information can be used for uh, classification. So um, it, uh, the summary is some tapes are able to be measured directly. Um, I did not measure the polarization. It's self-understood that we have a influence of polarization, but um, at the moment, this was simply the question of the color analysis in this case. We didn't make any um, checks in terms of polarization, but of course I would expect a polarization because every plastic is making an influence there and it has to be considered. And um, but uh, let's say for an ordinary transmission measurement, uh, there's a chance to succeed in such a thing. And also, is this possible to make it in an automated system? So if we sum up um, the questions which I think has to be solved is the, quality, the, the problem how we make the automatic pre-analysis of the particles. This is a thing which is not solved because we have millions of particles and to find the right ones at the right moment, that is for us the challenging point. And the second thing is um, that we have to um, look for a larger area. Um, we choose in our situation at the moment simply this 20 by 60 because then you can take a tape and it is not changing the focus. If you have one square meter area, then of course the tape is laying like this and the autofocus problem is increasing tremendously and for the testing period of course we tried to remove this and we made this small stuff. Um, in principle, I don't see a problem, for example, to make larger tapes by making this frame larger and to put some metal support in it or something. So a simple mechanical um, help that the tape is not uh, strange out of focus. So I would say this uh, using a standard scanning stage up to A6 
is realistic for the moment with these uh, restrictions which I mentioned. So this was my contribution. <laughs> Finally, some words to the company. We are 25 years old and um, we started mainly from the classical microscopy and focused to these different applications in, um, uh, in, in the spectroscopy. So our main job is light microscopy and light microscope spectroscopy. That means modification of the microscopes, making specials, making engineering, and uh, we are working worldwide. And uh, these are the different customers which, were, which we are working for. Questions? Did I understand correctly that you plan to uh, find information on the identity of material from yeah. the UV part? Yeah. I think uh, if we that take this information from the uh, from the spectros and our experience, there must be a chance to make a classification by the out of uh, by the out of fluorescence parts of different things. For example, yesterday I wrote an article that someone has made out of fluorescence of hemoglobin uh, by a two photon laser. So from the point of technology, this is challenging because two photon laser in a laboratory microscope requires some expertise. But from the principle, it's I think it's amazing that you simply do not have to make any kind of um, uh, dyes or any kind of staining and nothing. Mm -hmm. And uh, we also got, when I started last week in Heidelberg, we got the information that we measured some DNA on clothes because these guys are interested to find the position of DNA and to uh, check, uh, to, to take the DNA for the chemical analysis. <laughs> And we made some reflection UV measurements, which also are quite um, uh, challenging because it is possible to see extremely small particles. We talked about five micron particle, which was um, could be observed in autofluorescence, and then we could take it and put it to another uh, analysis like um, PCR or whatever. And I think uh, we have to invest much more energy in the experimental parts because you may know that there are trapping systems which are able to select these things automatically and all these options can be used as attachment to the, such an existing instrument. But of course, we have to solve the basic problem which is uh, the selection of the particles, of course. Yeah, I think the idea that, that, that we had in the consortium was much more to, for the basic classification, use the, the visual image. Yeah. So if I train a microscopist in on lab, um, within a day we can discriminate cotton, polyester, uh, sand, glass. Yeah. That, that, that the computer must be able to do that as well. And that doesn't include the UV, that doesn't include spectroscopy, it's just the image. Yeah, good. Uh, the question in the image, of course, is if you look to image parameters, you have size, you have diameter, uh, you, fibers, of course, are very simple. You have to look if fibers are overlaid. This, let's say these are typical image analysis problems. And uh, for this, of course, we have to look now f uh, what, uh, par what software package are available in this part and of course like we have partners which are manufacturing the scanning stages for us we have partners for the image analysis and we have to discuss with them these different options or we buy something which is available on the market from the four microscope companies because it's their daily job since 30 years to find uh, discrimination of, of uh, bright uh, of, of in intensities and to give them an information so that will be the interesting point to solve on this field. Our job as a microscope, let's say constructor, is to uh, find a way to make, the, uh, work, to make a professional workflow and um, to take care that this additional analysis um, can be used at the right moment with the right result. Of course, if we have some image analysis um, information, they can take this as an additional tool for the classification, this is for no discussion. Due to the fact that we mainly focus on the spectroscopy, our idea was, of course, to get uh, automatic spectral analysis. 
And um, this is one option to, if you see the spectra, you directly can say this, part, this group is there, this group is there, and this group is there. Um, we do not invest energy in the image analysis in our, let's say, core group. That does not mean that we are, do not have access to the image analysis. For example, this program which I showed you, this teaching is also not from our side, but is from our partners. And we have to discuss with our partners what is possible in this part, uh, how, to solve, how can we solve this question. The same will be, for example, um, the question how we can make uh, the macro image. Uh, what can we expect from a macro image? What kind of sensor we take to make this overview image? And how good is the quality if we take data from such a macro instrument to the microscope? Um, this will be, uh, a lot of people tell us it is not a problem, but if you do it, you will see the problem when you do it. And this, of course, needs some tests and some checks. Yeah? Do you have polarized light microscopy as part of your system? Yeah, sure. It's a standard microscope which has Sorry? all. It's a standard microscope at the moment which has all kinds of microscope techniques. So you can do polarized yeah, yeah, light sure. microscopy. All kinds of fluorescence, all kinds of polarized CDIC. And uh, on your slide where you showed the transmission, 25% transmission. What, what was that? Because I couldn't read the um, wavelength that was down to. Uh, it was 220 up there. We use an illumination at the moment which starts at 215 and we block this illumination to the low range because uh, the fiber solarization increases when you go below 220. And uh, one aspect, of course, if you sell an instrument, it should work for 10 years without any service. And if you don't need 200 nanometers. Why should we offer 200 nanometers if, uh, of course, we can it, but if we do it, then we have to go into a laboratory every year to replace the fibers, to replace the lenses, and if it is not desired because it's not part of your job, then, of course, we block it to keep the instrument stable. We also have, for example, uh, ultrafluor dry lens as a special edition, not to work with uh, glycerin and to get a good image quality. Because a lot of people, when we look to the different laboratories, they take the ultrafluor glycerin lens. They don't use it with glycerin because it is a lot of trouble to clean the sliders and so on. And then you have a lousy image quality. And of course, if you think of stitching, then, of course, the image quality gets a much different value compared to a spectroscopic measurement. Therefore, we ask uh, to, if it's possible to get a special edition of a dry lens for UV. And this lens also starts at 230 to 20 roundabout and goes to 2000, that you have the long wavelengths also because there are some interesting aspects. If you think of banknotes, they are going to um, make fluorescence, autofluorescence, uh, unorganic out of lessons, um, solvents into banknotes in the red and infrared part. And of course, this is also a subject for our uh, customers. Therefore, we try to cover the complete range. Thank you very much. You're welcome. Cornelia? I just wanted to come back to Jaap's uh, remarks. Um, so um, when you Yes, just uh, use um, the stereo microscope and a uh, newly trained um, person which can actually very easily um, yes, deduce what is actually in the tape lifts. Uh, we speak of artificial intelligence and uh, of training the systems uh, to actually do the same pre-assessment as a person can do. And not of the analytical part then. So that would speak for a yes, multi-layered approach again. <coughs> if you want an automated system that Enough actually can, yeah. pardon? Yeah. Okay. Um, just a, a comment, but I don't know if it's for you or if it's for member for, of the consortium. Uh, in all our daily job, what we want to do easily is not specifically to identify directly the traces, but to associate traces uh, in the way they can be a group of interesting traces. 
Uh, so if you have a, a system, maybe the, the recognition is not to identify precisely what kind of fiber in the first, uh, at the first look, mm -hmm. but maybe to be able eventually to associate traces at different location on different tape lifts. Because that is the, the job that is time consuming. For, sure. ex for example, if you have, if you, if you're looking for uh, black cotton fibers, mm -hmm. uh, you will find uh, two, maybe 200 on your tape lift. Mm -hmm. At the moment, you have to remove 200 traces from your tape lift and analyze them with MSP. Uh, and then finally, maybe you have 20 that are uh, corresponding to mm -hmm. your reference. So the advantage of a combined system is to say directly you have 20 and the, what, this is their location. You can remove them and then analyze more in detail eventually with other technique. And then without removing 200 traces at the first time. Yeah. Let's say the other way around. It is not a must that you make this analysis. My idea was to show you options, what is possible. And uh, of course, uh, we can focus on the recognition only. Uh, but we recognized in dealing, uh, discussing with different groups that uh, they do not refuse if they get an automatic uh, recognition. So it's your, let's say it's your choice. You get the spectra if you start the MSP and uh, it's your decision what you do if you give it to everyone or if you focus on other things. Uh, my idea was simply to show you what is possible at the moment.